And breaking this afternoon, word that President Trump is bypassing Congress to sell billions of dollars worth of weapons to countries including Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. The president will reportedly use a rare federal provision that allows him to make an emergency declaration to make the sale. That would let him get around Congress, where both Republicans and Democrats have opposed the deal. Rich Edson is tracking developments from the State Department. Rich, what more do you know about this? Well, Trace, the administration is citing an emergency with respect to tensions over Iran to approve this. You've now got reaction coming in from Capitol Hill, mostly from senior Democrats who oppose this. Uh, the top Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey, says uh, that the Trump administration has formally informed Congress that it's invoking a provision of the Arms Export Control Act that would allow sales of precision guided munitions to Saudi Arabia. Now, the House and Senate had both voted to restrict sales of weapons to Saudi Arabia over the war in Yemen. This was also at a time uh, right after the killing of Jamal Khashoggi in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. So there was a strong anti-Saudi sense in Congress when all of this is going on. And now you've got especially a number of Democrats who are coming out against what the Trump administration is doing here. But there also are Republicans who would oppose this uh, as well, Trace. Uh, Rich, stand by if you would, because we're also learning the U.S. sanctions have left Iran short on cash and Tehran-backed terror groups scrambling for new funding. That, according to declassified intel from the State Department, which Fox News got a hold of. The intel shows Iran is feeling the pinch a year after the U.S. withdrew from the nuclear deal and reimposed tough sanctions on its main source of revenue, of course, oil. Let's go back now to the State Department correspondent, Rich Edson. Rich, you got an exclusive look at some of this declassified intelligence. Right. And State Department officials are saying this is playing out now across the Middle East as you have these Iran-backed militias who have to cut their budgets and are now trying to raise money. According to this declassified intelligence uh, that State Department officials have described, they say that the new information shows Tehran has told Shia militias to find new revenue sources because Iran will provide them less money, that Hamas has enacted austerity plans because of funding shortfalls from Iran, that Iran's cyber command needs money, and that there's a fuel shortage in Syria as the United States has cut off one to three million barrels a month that Iran once supplied to the Assad regime. Hezbollah has also deployed a social media campaign, including children in military uniforms, to encourage donations to piggy banks. The State Department says this all demonstrates that its sanctions regime, 26 different instances, nearly a thousand targets, is working. The president would like to get to into negotiations with the Iranian regime so that he can put in place a new and better deal to replace the failed Iran nuclear deal. Uh, but while we're working on that objective, we're also denying Iran the revenue it needs to destabilize the Middle East. European governments uh, have had opposition to the U.S. approach on this, those that are still part of the Iran nuclear deal. They wanted the United States to stay in the agreement, not to restore these sanctions against the Iranian regime. They say that it would lead to a more destabilized or more problems for a volatile region already. And there are a number of Democrats who have also opposed the administration's move on this. Trace? Rich Edson, live for us at the State Department. Rich, thank you.